for mature audiences 15 years and over. It may contain coarse language, sexual references and adult themes. I can't sit down. <laughs> if you groan, you're homophobic. <laughs> a lovely time at the parade. Six different people came up to me and said, Oh, Tom Ballard, I love your work. What are you up to these days? I haven't seen you on TV for ages. <laughs> 56 fucking episodes, people. <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining us. Um, my highlight of the parade was when I got to get a selfie with Cher, everybody. <laughs> Cher! <laughs> It was so good. The only problem was that there was some old loser in there too. Have a look. Yeah, weird. <laughs> Dad! Get out of my photo with Cher! <laughs> and hey, if you're outside of Sydney or you can actually get to see the after party to see Cher, don't worry, his studio attends Richard Reed doing an impression of it. Hello, Sydney! There you go. <laughs> as good as the real thing, I say. You want some more of that, people? You want some more? <laughs> Hit it, Richie! If I could turn back time. There you go. <laughs> Bang on, bitch. <laughs> Wasn't just Sydney celebrating, though. The regional New South Wales town of Hay, or should I say, Hay, <laughs> they have a population of less than 3,000 and they had their own Mardi Gras on Saturday. I loved it. People travelled hundreds of kilometres to be there. They had 20 floats celebrating queer pride. It was so awesome. The floats looked remarkable. remarkable. One in particular caught my eye. More than 20 floats filled the main street as droves cheered on from the sidelines. It's a sight Lynn is unlikely to forget. Okay. I'm sorry. What the hell is going on here with small children being crammed into a gay trailer? <laughs> Not a good look for the community, it's all so. Hey, my guest tonight was in Australia to celebrate Mardi Gras alongside her fellow cast members from Orange is the New Black. You may know her as Boo. Leah Delaria is going to be here, everyone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, plus, the Oscars have just happened in Hollywood. Tonight, we bring you Felicity Ward's interview with Oscar nominees behind the film Lady Bird, director Greta Gerwig and Saoirse Ronan, everyone. How about that? <laughs> Bloody celebrities, isn't it? OK, I can't talk about the rest of the news dressed like this. I look ridiculous. Ridiculously hot. So, I know it's very distracting. Excuse me for one second. <clears throat> Whoo! Oh, man. Oh. Sorry about that, everyone. Seamless. <laughs> What else is in the news? Qantas, back in the news, for sending out an info pack to staff encouraging them to refrain from using gender inappropriate words and to be mindful of man interruptions. Oh, so now Qantas is worried about interruptions? Where the shit was this when I was trying to watch Boss Baby and the captain was all, oh, we're going down. Oh, oh prepare for impact. Stop man interrupting. <laughs> Also in the employee package, Qantas advised staff to recognise that Australia was not settled peacefully. <laughs> How does that even come up on a Qantas flight? <laughs> Welcome aboard flight QF 1770, which incidentally is the same year that Captain Cook discovered Australia. And if you have a problem with that, your exits are here and here. Get the fuck out! <laughs> Welcome aboard the spirit of white Australia, yeah! <laughs> Too much. A bit too much there. In any case, the new posters that Qantas have released really works, I think, to hammer their point home. Wake up to champagne. And wake up to the fact that Australia is built on the oppression and slaughter of the indigenous population. <laughs> Enjoy your flight. <laughs> Bad news for the government today. In the latest news poll, Malcolm Turnbull has fallen 12 points as preferred Prime Minister. Ouch! No one's taken a fall that hard since Barnaby Joyce was headbutted by his own sheep. <laughs> Man, the women just can't stay away from him, can they? <laughs> mm. The PM cannot be happy with Barnaby over this. I think we actually have some footage now of uh, the saga and how it's affecting Turnbull's poll numbers. <laughs> Still doing 
doing better than Bill Shorten, though. <laughs> Over the weekend, though, man, Barnaby was on fire. He was doing some extraordinary work. The Barnaby Joyce scandal has taken a bizarre turn with the former Deputy PM telling a reporter he's unsure if Vicky Campion's baby is his. According to Fairfax, Mr Joyce said the child's paternity was a grey area because he was travelling in Europe at the time of the child's apparent conception. Yes, apparently the paternity of Miss Campion's baby is a grey area. Worst Fifty Shades sequel ever. <laughs> Who's your daddy? Yeah, it's a nice little detail, I think, that we all... <laughs> Barnaby's comments have not impressed his colleagues, with some anonymous MPs describing them as utterly selfish and disrespectful, and one coalition MP telling News Corp he thinks Mr Joyce is being a first-class cunt. <laughs> hey, say what you like. It's better than flying economy cunt, all right? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Everyone hates you, but you do get more leg room. It's great. <laughs> but don't worry, folks. Barnaby has clarified that he's not going to have a paternity test and even if the baby isn't his, he will still raise the child as his own. To which the baby has replied, God damn it! <laughs> he's hanging out for a new dad, I think. <laughs> Barnaby stormed out of a press conference in Tamworth today after a reporter bring brought up the paternity of the child again, saying that it's no one else's business. That's right, it's nobody's damn business. How dare you talk about this? Who do you think you are? Me, two days ago? <laughs> I guess I can't blame Barnaby for making some bad choices on the weekend. I mean, I went to Mardi Gras on the weekend and I made some bad choices. People living near the parade route are sick of their yards and laneways being used as public toilets. <laughs> Paddington residents say they woke up this morning to find the areas near their homes covered in urine and faeces. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs>Community service announcement this Thursday is International Women's Day and we've got some very cool stuff coming up on the show to celebrate. Tomorrow night I'll be talking to former president of the Australian Human Rights Commission, Gillian Triggs, and we'll have stand-up from the star of the Fresh Blood comedy, The Angus Project, Nina Oyama, everyone. <laughs> That's tomorrow night. On Wednesday we'll have live music from super cool band The Preachers. And on the actual day itself, I'm going to shut up for a bit and this show will be guest hosted by Tonightly's own Bridie Connell and Greta Lee Jackson. <laughs> a little bit much there, I reckon. <laughs> yes, I'm prepared to be a good feminist and help women by doing less work. It's the kind of great guy I am. <laughs> You're welcome, ladies. <laughs> now, to overseas news, Tasmania. <laughs> was gripped by election fever this weekend, or as I call it, Tasmania! <laughs> Tasmania's Liberal Party has been emphatically returned to power in yesterday's state election. Premier Will Hodgman claimed victory over Labor's Rebecca White after winning more than 50% of the vote. Yes, Tasmania re-elected Premier Will Hodgman, a beloved household name, provided you live in the home of Premier Will Hodgman. <laughs> What really grabbed my attention was one specific policy from Hodgman's campaign. The Liberal Party's campaign did raise eyebrows with a policy to relax the state's gun laws, which were brought in following the Port Arthur massacre. About time, I say. For too long, I've been worried that Australia's gun laws were working too well. You know the saying, if it ain't broke, give people more guns. <laughs> it's a very serious issue, and you can tell that uh, by the gravitas of the footage that the drum chose to show of the Tasmanian Premier. Tasmanian Premier Will Hodgman is defending the proposal and says his team are trying to support farmers without defying the 1996 firearms agreement that was struck after the devastating Port Arthur massacre which claimed the lives of 35 people. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> We're taking this gun control issue very seriously. Whee! <laughs> At the heart of the proposed changes is a plan to extend gun licence dur duration for 10 years, which is fine, because just like I said in 2008 to beloved former Labor leader and incredibly sane man Mark Latham, nothing can change in 10 years. <laughs> yes, changed. There'll also be great access to Category C firearms, such as self-loading rifles and pump-action shotguns, mostly for farm work and silences. You know, for when you need to kill a cow execution style <laughs> without giving up your position to the other cows. <laughs> But in the end, the people of Tasmania voted and the Liberals left the night as the big winners, meaning everybody else was, technically speaking, massive losers. The Liberal Party achieved a majority government and a majority in the primary vote.
50.5% against 33% for the Labor Party and 10% for the Greens. The Jackie Lambie network got just 3.2% and failed to win a seat. Yes, 3.2% of the vote. And all of them turned out to hear Jackie's concession speech. Oh, no, Jackie, what are you doing? Jackie, there's more balloons than there are people! Probably just all there, they thought it was the fucking meat raffle. Come on, Jackie! Oh, dear. <laughs> was it a good night in Tassie to be a member of the Greens? Then again, is it ever a good night to be a member of the Greens? <laughs> <laughs> Typical ABC. <laughs> Support dropped for the party in the state long considered Greens heartland where they were birthed. But local leader Cassie O'Connor made an impassioned speech to the, to the faithful. We've been here for 35 years and we'll be here for at least another 35. Wait, we'll be here for at least another 35? Is that an inspiring message to send? I to promise you we have some really solid medium-term plans. <laughs> After that, we'll see. You're on your own. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Green's very interesting, actually. Uh, federally, they are calling for $100 million to be pumped into video game development which is very serious business in this country. Australians spent over $3 billion on gaming last year, and gaming is obviously very important to the Greens, presumably because their leader looks like a character from Minecraft. <laughs> now, I might be taking a bit of a leap here, but I think it's fair to say that gamers have a bit of a reputation. They don't mind a bit of the... <laughs> a wacky tobacco. <laughs> And Greens leader Richard Natale has spoken in the past of his hope to decriminalise recreational drugs such as cannabis. Is this part of the Greens' vision? A synergy of gaming and weed? Well, joining me now is Senior Policy Advisor from the Greens, Rodney. Hi, Rodney. Hi, Tom. <laughs> hey, so what other policies in this area are the Greens working on? OK, we're going to spend $420 million on robot dishwashers. <laughs> robot dishwashers? you got robot vacuums? Yeah. Robot dishwashers. They go around and they clean your dishes wherever they are. Right. <laughs> that's, that's the sound they make, yeah. They clean the spoons. <laughs> they clean the forks. <laughs> they clean the knives. Yeah. And they clean the, the little uh, teaspoons. Yeah. <laughs> and, they, and they clean your bong. Get out of here, Rodney, you little so and so. Rodney Todd, everyone. Fucking greased. <laughs> hey, the Oscars were on today. One film nominated for five Academy Awards was Lady Bird. It's been one of the most celebrated movies of the last 12 months. It tells the coming of age story of a high school senior and the, her turbulent relationship with her mother. Our UK contributor here at Tonightly, Felicity Ward, managed to catch up with the star of the film, Saoirse Ronan, plus director and writer Greta Gerwig. Have a look. I know you get asked about your name all of the time. I do. You must Are you going to so... ask me about no. it? No. My mum's name is Trevlin, so I totally get oh, it. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's the face. And so I just want to see, do you have a face that you practice when people go, so, Sersha, that's an interesting name. What, yeah. What's your face? I, I just go, am I wrong or right in saying you're a certified aerobics instructor? Step aerobics. Yeah. I mean, that's even yeah. better. That's yeah. so radical. Yeah, step aerobics. I am. I don't... Probably my certification has lapsed at this point. I don't think you ever lose it from yeah, me here, though. Yeah, you know? inside. <laughs> Maybe it's not bad training for being a director running a class, yeah, um, right. <laughs> an aerobics, a step aerobics class. Just a lot of people that don't believe in themselves enough and you're... Yeah, and you're really kind of getting them to, like, do a routine. So, in the film, it depicts the mother-daughter dysfunctional relationship so well. If you're tired, we can sit down. I'm not tired. You were dragging your feet. You are so infuriated. Please stop yelling. I'm not yelling. Oh, oh it's God. perfect. Do you love it? Are you concerned you've set yourself up for a lifetime of women in their 30s coming up to you going, I never told my mom that I loved her and we just fought a lot and... Yeah, well, no, I'm, I'm thrilled that that's what I've set up for myself. <laughs> it's actually women between the ages of, like, 15 and 60 yeah, who right. say, like, 
oh, I've been that mother or I've been that daughter. And it's amazing. It's actually, they do all come up to me and they tell me stories. Yeah, I bet. Which is sweet. Yes, yeah. I feel like that will run out of sweetness in about two years' time. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Maybe in two years I'll be like, please don't tell me your story. So the film's set in 2002, 2003. And like in the opening scene, you say, or Lady Bird's character says that she wants to live through something. Yes. So what I've done is I've got a list of things from 2002, 2003 <laughs> and a list of things now. Right. And then I want you to tell me what you'd rather live through what? again. Okay. It's kind of like Ellen's <laughs> Who Would You Rather but less sexually humiliated. Mm, right, okay. No disrespect to Ellen. Neckties with T-shirts. Very Avril Lavigne. I know. I have okay. the same feeling. Feeling a bit sick. Or those cold shoulder T-shirts. Oh, God. What? what with yeah, the whole? Both of them. I know. Necktie, no, I... necktie with T-shirts. Absolutely. I feel yeah. the same. Frosted tips or... Men with a top knot, bush ranger beard, trying to sell you coffee beans in his record store that's a yurt in a car park. <laughs> because, I mean, frosted tips are really horrible, but I feel like at least they don't come with a whole lifestyle. Yeah, Eminem in 8 Mile or Eminem in Ed Sheeran. With Ed Sheeran. With, in Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Eminem in Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Let's start that, that rumour. That... <laughs> does that... No, but this... Eminem in Ed Sheeran. No, I would say, oh, but I love him in 8 Mile. It's tough. I do like that song as well. I think probably Eminem in 8 Mile. Okay, we well, might Because you're mates, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just don't tell him. Sorry. Yeah. This isn't, nobody's going to say this anymore. Yikes. Okay, oh. US changes French fries to freedom fries in protest to the Iraq war to France. That totally happened. Or the British public voting to name the ship Bodie McBoatface. Bodie McBoatface? Yes. Did you not hear about what this? Boat? It was a big boat that David Attenborough put a public poll. <laughs> That's amazing. It's totally incredible. I want to be there when that happens. <laughs> Bodhi McBoatface. I don't even know what that is, but I like it. They just, they just yeah. named a boat then. <laughs> hey, it's been so lovely. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for your time. That was fun. Thanks, Thanks so much. <laughs> You know this, but on tonight, Lee, we solve problems. <laughs> we do! All the time. We solve the African gang crisis, sorted. Global warming. And of course, Australia Day racism and sexism. Done! <laughs> I myself, being a super celeb, tackled the refugee crisis in my stand up show, Boundless Planes to Share. I think we'd all agree that problem is sorted. <laughs> Now, the award season in the US often sees A-list celebrities trying to raise awareness for various causes, and this year is no different. Along with the Me Too movement, guests at the Oscars were encouraged to wear orange pins to show support for gun control. I, for one, want to thank all these celebrities for actively... <laughs> ..doing their bit to solve the world's problems. <laughs> and Greta Lee Jackson presents this look back at those brave, brave activists. <laughs> War, famine, inequality. With so many crises around the world, tonight we reflect on those who have made it a better place. Highly paid actors. <laughs> For the 2018 Oscars, actors were asked to wear orange pins to support gun control. And if anyone's going to solve gun control, it would be rich thespians. They have a long tradition of instantaneously ending catastrophes, such as this moment in 2014. To all the dreamers out there around the world watching this tonight in places like the Ukraine and Venezuela, uh, I want to say uh, we are here. It was incredible. <laughs> One moment Ukraine and Venezuela were in crisis, but then suddenly Russian forces withdrew from Crimea and Venezuela's inflation rate fell from 800% back to normal levels. I'm just glad that Jared Leto casually mentioned those two countries while accepting an award for acting. Going further back in history, there are more astonishing statements made by celebrities that saved the world. Who can forget how history was altered dramatically when a young Charles Chaplin made the great dictator? A few years later, Hitler killed himself. <laughs> It's not just geopolitical crises. Celebrities are adept at ending medical crises as well. Yes, yeah, so I was in the laboratory um, with loads of other scientists uh, and all this really expensive equipment. And we were all just doing like nothing, like literally nothing. Um, and then I saw this ad featuring Sarah Jessica Parker wearing a red ribbon. 
And we were like, shit! <laughs> We've been forgetting to curate Javi all this time! Oh my god! So forgetful. I am I'm such a Samantha. A new hero emerging from the Hollywood scene is Ryan Gosling, who in 2005 wore this t shirt to raise awareness of the violence in Darfur. And he didn't stop there. In 2011, Osama bin Laden was still at large, and with no solutions on how to bring him down, the world was desperate for an answer. That was until Ryan Gosling wore this t-shirt saying, 3.30am Black Hawk helicopters land in about about 3.34am deploy 23 Navy SEALs, 3.45am blast through perimeter walls, 4.01am use flashbangs and smoke to confuse the enemy, 4.05am ascend stairs to second level of the compound, 4.09am shoot Osama in the face, hashtag get Osama. Well, the whole world owes Ryan a debt of gratitude. If Mr. Gosling hadn't worn a shirt that said 3.30am Black Hawk helicopters land in about a bad, 3.34am deploy 23 Navy SEALs, 3.40... There are still more issues out there that need fixing child soldiers, racism, overfishing. Rest assured, celebrities will fix them all. And then there's the gross accumulation of wealth by the 1%, something Hollywood celebrities try to draw attention to every year by wearing clothes that cost tens of thousands of dollars. True heroes, each and every one of them. Next week, we look at how Matt Damon fixed global warming by attending a movie premiere in a polar bear outfit. So brave. My guest tonight is a stand-up comedian, jazz musician and actor. She plays the one and only Big Boo in the hit Netflix show Orange is the New Black, which portrays the lives of inmates at a women's prison. What was it that turned you to the light? Well, I just, I prayed a lot. And then Jesus came in me, to me, sorry, Jesus came to me, with so much love. Praise the Lord. Hmm? Praise the Lord indeed. Her name is Leah Delaria and she joined me in the studio earlier today. Hello, Leah. Hi, Tom. Happy Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras. <laughs> so fab. <laughs> okay, enough. It's taking away attention from me. I don't like it. <laughs> what do you think of this? Does this work? Uh, it's fabulous. I think it's it works very, very, very well. I'm not sure red's your color, but it's oh, fine. what? Yeah, no, it's bringing out the red in your face. Oh no, yeah, that happens. I've been told about that by a stylist. <laughs> How was your weekend? You're out here for Mardi Gras. You're on the Netflix float in the Sydney Mardi Gras parade. How did it all go? It I'm still drunk. Yeah, okay, great. I don't know about you, but I'm still drunk. I'm coming down. Oh, God, it was too much. <laughs> it was so much. I wasn't on my float for even five minutes before the girls from other floats started coming over to make out with me. It was oh. crazy. Did you see the dikes on bikes? Where's my, where's my camera? Where's my, is this my oh. camera? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. through my camera. Yeah. Big shout out to the naughty nuns who were topless and wearing leather <laughs> harnesses. Big shout out. <laughs> Big shout out. Oh, my Lord. Oh, yeah. Now, you have been out for a very long time. You were the first openly gay woman on American TV. Is that right? I was right? the first openly gay comic to perform on television in America. That's extraordinary. Yeah. And you've seen some shit. You've been arrested for doing gay things. Is yeah, right? well, when I came out, uh, it was illegal to be queer in every state of the union. Mm. So, yeah, I was arrested twice. Uh, for In Illinois, I was arrested for open and notorious homosexuality. And in Missouri, same crime, open and notorious homosexuality. In Illinois, they arrested me for holding hands with a girl. And in Missouri, it was a, a whole lot more. <laughs> high five. Yes, oh. my brother. Terrible high five. That was the worst high five ever, but you are <laughs> you are a fag, so yes, there is yes. that. You know. that's, that's high much... five like a fag! <laughs> that's me doing sport, man. I know. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and you've seen some shit that you you, you were bashed to in 1980 at, a, at an actual gay pride week in San Francisco. Wow, you've Springs. done your research. Yeah, I was indeed gay bashed. So now and then now you're here with the naughty nuns and stuff. In yeah, Sydney making out, dancing next to Jonathan Groff on the Netflix load, who never looked gayer. He make honestly, he makes you look like Donald Trump he was so gay that day. <laughs> Wouldn't stop dancing. It was fabulous. Like, where's my camera? Jonathan, call me, please. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and you're also, you've also, you know, claimed the idea of being butch. That's a very big part of who you are. You love the butchness. Yeah. You wrote in your book that you were, is this true? You were mistaken for a man by your gynecologist. No, no that's a joke. Son. Oh, I'm I, sorry. Serious, I was under the impression that you were sort of a comic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't research this shit. I thought that no, would be a amazing no, story. No, no, no. That's one of my jokes. That every day of my life, somebody calls me sir. The worst is in the gynecologist's okay. office. <laughs> we, have, we, have the, we have the results of your pelvic, sir. 
That's good. <laughs> That's very much. Uh, being out here for Mardi Gras means that you are not in America for the Oscars. Are you sad about that? I am seen... horrified. In yes. fact, I booked this. We booked this whole thing, and it was all set up. And then they announced what day the Oscars were. And it was like, no. And then as if to rub salt in the wounds, I got the invite to the Vanity Fair party, which I'd never gotten before. Oh, so it was like, I'm so mad. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. But then bad. I got to make out with the naughty nun on the, on the float. So wearing the harness, topless. So I'm done. Life's a magical thing. Life, you know, life throws you lemons. You make lemonade, right? Indeed. Um, a big uh, discussion about the Oscars was, you know, the Me Too movement carries on for all the recent um, mm -hmm. award ceremonies we've seen. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that vibe in Hollywood at the moment? And it's how much do you think this, like, the Oscars ceremony and people wearing black dresses and stuff is really going to change something that I'm sure you've seen up close and personal? Uh, I, think, I think that we're, it's very exciting to me to see this, honestly, and I'll take five seconds to try not to be an asshole here, but um, it's very exciting to me because it feels different. It feels like there is actual change happening. People are being arrested. People are being taken to court. People are being taken seriously. I mean, when you look what happened with uh, even Bill Cosby, yeah. You know, and that was just last year. Do you know what I mean? It really feels like it, there's something different that's happening now. Plus, it's trickled down. It's happened. It's now spread out out of the Hollywood world into all over in, into every industry in the United States and worldwide. I'm talking about it in Australia. Mm. I'm talking about it in Canada. I'm talking about it in Mexico. I'm talking about it in England. you know what I mean? Yeah. So that, to me, feels important. I can you know? only imagine. And, when, and, and also... Just to say, what happened with Anthony Rapp, you know, and, and with Kevin Spacey, these are, you know, this is something that we've needed to fix for a very long time. Um, sexual harassment is real. It's out there. Powerful men do it, and they need to stop. Mm. It's time to fucking stop. <laughs> you hear that, men watching, please? Yeah. I can uh, yeah, all the, big, all the big straight, powerful white men watching your stuff. <laughs> watching this so, shit. <laughs> We are changing lives. We are changing lives. But I can only imagine on the set of Orange is the New Black, yeah. you know, a woman, a woman centered show, an empowering show with a lot of queer women involved and stuff. Yeah. There's none of that bullshit oh, going honey, on. Oh, honey, that set is a dyke bar. Seriously. <laughs> uh, honestly, all it needs is a pool table and a DJ playing We Are Family. You know what I mean? It's a. It's crazy. I love it. Now, I've been told you are the fisting wrangler on the set of Orange is the New Black. What does that mean? Is that a joke again or is that real? Please tell me it's real. Well, you know, they have consultants in every aspect <laughs> of show business. Yes. So we had a fisting scene in our pilot, and I had never met Natasha Leone before. Yep. She had never met me. Of course, I knew who she was, and she knew who I was. And um, when we sat down to, the, to film the first scene together... Um, we we had to actually reshoot the scene because they had put us across from each other, like you uh, at the in the cafeteria, right. and we would not shut up. The two of us would not shut up. It was just <laughs> like we were trying to get fucking fired or something, right? <laughs> and it was just us making. So finally, the director Trim, Mike Trim, who was fabulous, um, I love that his name is Trim, right? And I'm in Australia. Um, <laughs> he. <laughs> I, he comes out and he goes, that's it. Natasha, come down here. Leah, stay there. We're going to do the scene again because they couldn't get it. They couldn't get a shot off because we were talking so much. So we all read the script. We knew there was a fisting scene in the pilot. So after we get done shooting that scene, we're walking out, going to Video Village, which is where everybody sits while they're setting up for the next, for the next shot. Mm -hmm. And Natasha goes, Delaria, how do you fist? So I'm like, I'm sorry, you coming to me to ask why am I... <laughs> Am I the fisting consultant? Is that what's going on here? So I had a joke at the time in my stand-up where, so, uh, where I show people how do you fist. Yep. And so I did it for her. And it just basically it's, it goes like this. Um, look for the car keys. Look for the car keys. Judy Garland. <laughs> look for the car keys. Look, look for, for the, the car, car keys. keys. Judy, Judy Garland. Garland. Joan Crawford. Oh, God. So that was... <laughs> So I did that for Natasha, and yeah. she lost her mind. And then, <laughs> so then I t told her I kind of went through probably how one would do it in prison, given that one had nothing, no lube or anything like that. Sure. And, yeah, and that's what she took to the fisting scene. Okay, wonderful. Where she was fisting Yell Stone. Right, yes. In fact, yes. Australia's own Australia's Yell Stone. Own. <laughs> Look for the car keys. Look for the car keys. <laughs> Judy girl. Yeah. We're almost out of time, unfortunately. It's been so lovely <laughs> having you here, but on that wonderful note, what is next for the women of Litchfield? What can we expect in the future? Uh, this is work? what I can tell you about season six. Absolutely fucking nothing. Asshole, you think I'm going to tell you just because you're gay? Yes. No. Come on. I like working. I can tell you nothing. <laughs> this is homophobic. All right. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for being here tonight, Lily. It was an absolute oh, joy. Give it up! Yeah! Oh. Hey, you're my brother. Wow. Oh. Wow. Wow.
way. <laughs> Gay people rule! In your face, straighties. Leah Delaro, everybody, give it up! <laughs> hey, she's returning to Australia in June to perform a night of jazz and stand-up comedy at both the Melbourne Recital Hall and the City Recital Hall in Sydney. Go check that out if you like. Stick around on ABC Comedy. Up next, a special presentation of the 11 o'clock, the Australian short film that was nominated at today's Oscars. That is our show for tonight, everybody. Massive thanks to Leah Delaro, Greta Gerwig, Sasha Rowan and Felicity Ward. See you tomorrow night. Bye!